Prophetic Island Ministries. It's so good to be with you. My name's Steve Tebb. I'm sending you a lot of love and greetings today uh, from UK in London, where I live. And it's an amazing time to be alive, despite of what is happening and taking place at the moment in the lockdown with Corona. But God is still on the throne. He's still Lord. He's still king and he's still seated above every power and principality. And I feel really honored to just be able to join you for this short time. Dear friend Brian invited me just to lead a song of worship for you guys and to uh, bring just a, an encouragement to you and what you're really going for as a ministry. So um, I hope this blesses you. Let's just lock into Jesus. Lord, we love you. We worship you. We give you glory tonight. We thank you for your presence. We thank you that you're the God of breakthrough. We thank you that you're a God of delivering fire. We thank you that you're a God of power. We thank you that you're a God of righteousness and justice. We thank you that you're a God who's right here, right now. Just begin to welcome the presence of the Holy Spirit into your homes tonight, wherever you are. Just pray right now the fire of God will begin to fill your homes as you worship Jesus, that you would see the King of glory and you would see the God who is a light in the darkness. Father, come and dwell among us tonight as we worship you in Jesus' name. Yeah. 
You never stop working You never stop I never stop working And even when I don't see it You're working, Lord And even when I don't feel it You're working You never stop You never stop 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 working You never stop You will not stop working You will not No, you will not stop working No, you will not You will not stop working That you're moving in a nation of violent Lord Yes, you're moving in a nation of violent Lord Yes, you're moving, you're moving, you're moving Let every knee bow Let every tongue confess Let every knee bow Let every tongue confess Let every knee bow Let every tongue confess That Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Christ is Lord 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 Lord, where there is no way, God makes a way. And I want to encourage you tonight, just if I can, these last few minutes I've got with you, I want to, I want to share just something I really felt like God has put on my heart for you as a ministry and what you've been plowing into. And I thought about prophetic island ministries and how it's marked by the P and by the I and by the M. And as I saw that, it was like the Lord said, there are three marks and the three things that are going to characterize the ministry is going to be the purity of heart for the nation of Ireland to see. It's going to be the innovation and the intimacy that you walk in as a ministry and, and mobilization as well. So I feel like there's a something of purity that God is really wanting to release on you as a ministry in this time. The scripture says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And I feel like as a community and as a ministry of people, you're marked and you're gathered by seers. Many of you are seers. Many of you see visions. Many of you have dreams. Many of you see the things of God. And I feel like the Lord wants to impregnate a new scene and a new birthing a purity in you as a ministry where the Lord says that you will be marked and you will be known by your purity, by your motive, by your intentions being clean, that you'll find favor in the sight of God and you'll find favor in the sight of man. But the Lord says also that there is going to be a marking of intimacy that's going to come as well through this purity. As you see God, you will be a people known for your radical, intimate pursuit of Jesus above all things where he's the preeminence and he takes first place. You're called to be a radical people. You're not called to be ordinary. You're not called to look the same as someone else. You're not called to be clones or imitators even. You're called to be a people that look like Jesus, not look like someone else, not carry someone else's anointing, but carrying the anointed one within you. And so I feel like there is a marking of this purity, but then there's the innovation as well, where God is birthing 
businessmen and people like that in you as a ministry with innovative, creative ideas that God is unlocking right now over the next couple of years, especially in this state right now that we're in, that God is giving innovation, innovation, innovation to you as a ministry. And then I saw mobilization. I feel like there's a training. There's a discipling that's coming up through Prophetic Island. There is a discipling Um, anointing on you as a house and as a family that God wants to release to mobilize the church, to mobilize prophets, but also to mobilize a people that can hear the voice of God in a generation where people don't know how to hear God's voice. But the scripture says that my sheep know the voice of their shepherd. And I know that's in a reference to the intimacy, but it it comes and filters into the realm of the prophetic as well. And there's something about you guys mobilizing. And then I saw just the building. I just saw building. I feel like God's going to give you a building. I feel like there's a physical um, increase of building and structure that God is releasing to you. But I felt like the Lord say what you guys have been doing over the last year or however long it's been, has been um, plowing. There has been like a building. There has been a digging that was taking place. And I really felt like um, I saw you guys putting pillars into the ground. And I felt like there was a solidifying that there was a uh, foundation that had been built and it was, I saw six pillars and I don't know what each of those uh, pillars are. Hopefully you guys will be able to identify that and pray into that a little bit more. But I felt like there were six pillars that were being built and being established that God was wanting to release and build upon you as a house and as a ministry and as a movement as well. And so... um, Within that, I felt like someone on the team, someone within leadership has got a real particular heart of worship. Now it feels like a cliche word coming from a worship leader, but um, as I saw this picture of the pillars being dug and put into the ground, it really reminded me, it was like the tabernacle of David being built. And I feel like there had even been some that feel like, oh, we're, but we're a prophetic ministry, we're not necessarily a worship ministry. And I, it's like I hear the Lord saying, Those two things aren't mutually exclusive. They're not separated. Those two things are meant to go together. They're actually you're meant to be a house that operates out of the prophetic through the anointing of worship that is on you as well. And I feel like you've been digging for that. There's like a Davidic reawakening of worship that you guys are going to be uh, partnering and plowing deeper and deeper into in this time and in this season. And there is this Davidic call and this anointing on you as a house. Um, to really rebuild the temple, really rebuild that place of worship unto the Lord, that altar, that altar, that sacrifice, because God always lands on the sacrifice with fire. And so I feel like there is this, um, he really wants to burn up the sacrifice. He wants to burn on the sacrifice of people's hearts as they build an altar of worship back to Jesus. But you're going to see a whole ton of like this prophetic flow and creativity and mobilization, all this stuff that's going to fall into place. And I do feel like there's a stretching, a stretching out that's taking place. That God is stretching you. God is expanding you. God is growing you. God is even expanding like your your net. There's something even of your network and your surroundings and the people that you're connected with where the Lord says you will not be uh, isolated even, but there will be an increase of connections that you're going to start to find affiliations with different prophets, different Uh, places that are going to really endorse and support and uphold what you are investing into because this is for the transformation of a nation not even just for an area or a region but for a nation that you might be a people that hear the word of God for your nation and see it transformed for the glory of God so that many souls will be saved many lives will be set free many people would bow down to Jesus and that the Lamb of God would receive the reward of his suffering and so I encourage you tonight I want to exhort you to press into Jesus with all that you have, to give your hearts once again to him, to surrender and say yes to what God is putting on you uh, as a ministry. I'm really excited for you. I've never yet been able to witness it and experience it myself, but I hope I get to at some point. Um, But I love, I love you, Brian. I love uh, what you guys, the house are after and your hearts of purity and just um, what God is doing at the moment is amazing. And so I really bless you guys to enter into this and uh, have an amazing rest of your evening in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, welcome to Prophetic Ireland Home Edition for this lockdown period. I hope you're all well. Tonight we're joined with Steve Tebb, who's blessing us with some worship and we just wanted to 
um, touch briefly on worship and debunk some myths about it, um, especially in this season. We've been in a season now, um, a couple of months in lockdown with everything that's going on. And, you know, it's been brought to our attention that, yes, be prayerful. And there's so much prayer going on in this period of consecration, but also how important it is to worship and to just cultivate that atmosphere of worship, that culture of worship. And that it just, you know, when we look back at where we come from, we are made in the image of God. It says in Genesis, we're made in his likeness. So when we are made in his likeness, God has a sound. He has that power and that authority that when he speaks, it happens. You know, he said, let there be light and there was light. And as his children, we don't just, it's not just our form. It's not just inheriting looks. I mean, we know that from family members. There's isms, there's skills, there's giftings, there's strengths that we can all inherit from our line. And one of the things that we inherit from God is that ability to communicate, to speak. It's that sound. And as individuals, we all have a unique sound. But when that's partnered with God, it creates this new whole sphere of ability for the sound that we make. And we are designed in particular to use that sound in worship to worship the Father. And oftentimes now what we're hearing is people, you know, how could you worship? How could you be glad at a time at this when it's so difficult for everybody? And it's recognizing that worship is really nothing to do with us. Worship isn't about how we're feeling. It's not about what's happening in our lives. It's not about, you know, weighing it up to see, are we worshiping today? Are we not? Worship is that realisation and alignment with truth of who God is. John 4 verse 24 tells us about worshiping in spirit and truth. And that's because when we worship, it's deeper than praise. We can praise each other for that's a great job. You know, that was, you know, a good word or I love that song. You know, we can praise each other and edify each other and lift each other up. And we can praise God for his unending mercies and things that he does for us. But when it comes to worship, that's a spirit level in depth encounter with God of us giving back to him and glorifying him for who he is and David says in Psalms about how he you know worships with his most innermost being and that's where worship comes from it's in here it's that depth of our spirit man it's not our heads it's not our thoughts it's not our emotions it's really just releasing that innate ability to connect with the father our bodies were created on earth and we start as babies and we grow but our spirit man has been in heaven and released down into earth so our spirit knows god our spirit knows heaven it knows the sound so when we worship that's a we you knew a little bit of home for our spirit and it just goes to show the nature of our Father and the nature of our God that when we worship him completely, when we abandon everything and go to that depth of worship, actually it strengthens us and it enables us to keep moving even in the most difficult of times. When we worship, we put our focus fully on God. And when we do that, I mean, the glory of God is so overpowering that really everything else dims in its view, no matter what it is. So when we get into that place of pure, intimate worship, it's a place of abandon. I mean, it, you see it in films, people try to, you know, make it this other thing of abandon where they think when you're so in love and, and, they're basically trying to describe worship. And it's like that ability to completely let go of everything and the presence of God just falls. And when we get into that place, we're able to actually align with a heavenly perspective because when we're looking at the world and what's happening, it's really hard to connect with God because we're trying to bring our thoughts and his thoughts somewhere in the middle and it doesn't work like that 
we have to lay aside every weight that holds us back and push forward to the goal, as it says in the Hebrews. But to do that, we need to just take your head off, just really lay it down. It's a posture of heart and just that real effort to push past everything and say, no, God is God and I'm worshipping God for who he is. It says again, when it talks in John 4, when it talks about in spirit and in truth, truth, I mean, the only truth is the word of God. The only thing unchanging is God. Situations, circumstances, relationships, they all change. Our emotions are always moving, but God doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. His love endures forever. His mercies are new every morning. The word of God is constantly reiterating and fortifying who God is. It's so important to know your word and to get in there. And even if you've read it over and over, you just have those light bulb moments where it just strikes you and it goes from reading it and having an understanding to that revelation. So worship is really such a lifeline and it is about pushing past all of our own junk and just getting to God for him, for who he is. That's the important thing. Because in these days, we can't rely on what we've always relied on. And it's been such a blessing um, when we really push into this place where we can see that actually God is unchanging. The God of, you know, Moses and Joshua that was alive then is still alive today and still moves. It's incredible that we're so blessed to be his people. And we have this sound, this particularly created sound from our own vocal cords and our own spirits. Our own spirits have their sound and we know that sound can affect things. Even in science, certain pitches can shatter glass. When we look at Joshua, when they walked around and they were obedient and they walked around the walls, when they released that shout at the end and the walls shattered, that's what happens when our voices and that, that obedience come together and God intervenes. It's unknown what we're capable of with God because by ourselves we're capable of so much. But when God intervenes and we walk in an obedience and a humility with him, when we release that sound, we're in the year of the mouth. So it's a time when we are releasing our sound. And again, I just feel so blessed because we've had two months of being able to get on our faces before God, you know, and just to having that safe space where we can really cultivate relationship. And it's all down to choice. I mean, it's what you chose to pursue in this time. And it's whether you prioritise your relationship with God or whether you prioritise other things. And there's still time to push in. When we look at this month in the Hebrew year, in Genesis 19, it talks about the same month as we're in now. My pronunciation's horrendous. It's Shivan, I believe, um, the 24th of May um, it was there. So in Exodus 19, that's when Moses came to Mount Sinai and it was just as the, the Israelites came out of Egypt and that's when the new instructions were given just before Pentecost. So for me, that's such a parallel because now we're sitting here, we've been through this consecration. Some of us are still coming out of the consecration. Some of us are still in it, but it's basically coming to that stage when we're wanting our instructions for the next move. There's a shift, there's a change where we're starting to think, right, how do we move forward? We know it's not the same. We know it can't ever be the same as it was before. People have been pressured into this new birthing and this new way of thinking and the innovations coming out of this are incredible because God's been able to sit people down and give them the time to do it. So we're waiting on instruction for what to do. And one of the things we need to be careful of with our voices at this time is that we are vocalizing positive and a way to align yourself to the Hebrew mindset, a way to align that with what God wants you to say is to worship 
take yourself to that place of worship. You don't need a band. You don't need a concert. So many people have said before, oh, it's different if it's a conference, you can get into it. Why? Yes, it's collective worship and yes, it's easier. But when you have, and it is a discipline, when you have that discipline where you can bring the presence of God into your home, oh, I can't even describe it. It's incredible because then you have this this atmosphere created where God can move in your own home. And worship just aligns that with God. It strengthens your spirit, man. It lifts your spirit. It just really edifies you. Even though that's not the point, the point is to really focus on God and to worship for him for who he is. But like I said, it's in his nature that he does not take without giving and he always gives back. And it's where our spirits are most at home when they're in alignment with the Father, in that intimate place of worship. It's deeper than praise. It's got so much more foundation. It's down at your roots. It's your innermost depth and it cries out to worship God. It's an incredible way to live. I mean, Jesus said about your body being a living sacrifice. Worship doesn't have to be sitting down singing. Worship can be in your movement. It's a lifestyle. It's a way of living. It's a mindset. It's the way you can move through things and get to places. I can worship cleaning because you get stuck in and it starts with, oh God, I'm so thankful I have this house to clean. I had to teach myself instead of moaning about the never ending wash basket to say, you know, we have enough clothes that our wash basket's always full. We have people in our home. We, I have family, I have children that wear many clothes. <laughs> so it was that attitude of gratitude getting taught. But then in that came this place of worship and it could, I mean, it wasn't great for cleaning in the end because you ended up not doing anything and just kind of sitting there in worship. But it cultivates this way of moving and this way of thinking and it brings you to the place of the Father and you know the difference because there's such a, you know, if there's a crust there, there's a breaking in it. We've all had those times where in worship we've just wept and we wept on to God. There's such, I mean, we have the spirit of repentance is such a gift as well. And, you know, I find that tied into worship as well when I'm worshipping and suddenly in the depth I find something that needs dealt with. I mean, our God is so gracious. He's such an economist as well. He uses everything. He uses everything for good. He's so grateful to, so gracious to us and we are so grateful to him. So at this time, I just want to encourage you to really find that place of worship. Find that depth. We all have it. We all have a spirit man or you'd be dead. So we need to really get him alive and get him up and moving and get him aligned with what God says. Even when we're studying a lot of the word and it's so good to study and it's so important to study the word of God. But we can end up in this mindset where we're trying to study and then we get our own thoughts and you can go off on diversions and off on tangents. There's an ability with worship to get right to the core of everything and just on your face before God, lay it all down. And that heavenly perspective comes through with worship because we remind ourselves of God's sovereignty, of his greatness, of his power, of him being head of everything. I love in Corinthians, it talks about his power and his might and his majesty. I love that. And we need to remind ourselves who God is when everybody else around us is reminding of everything else and all the obstacles of shouting about the mountains and the illnesses and everything what we're saying. All of these things don't impact God. Nothing changes him. He doesn't change. And when we need an anchor in the storm, when we need stability, because we're people, we need stability. When we need that, it's always there. It's in God. And we're so blessed to have him. I honestly don't know how I would cope if I didn't have him. I probably wouldn't. Lord knows what that would look like. We'll not go there. But we have this God and we need to worship. We need to learn to worship him because we will worship something. We are born to worship. So 
when we don't worship God, we worship something. That's the difficulty when it's the gym. And, you know, in the olden days, we talked about idols um, and we almost picture little carvings and things, but that's not today. Idols are iPhones and, and people and structures and governments and and things that we put more trust in than God. And don't get me wrong, it's very clear in the scriptures that you pray for those in authority. And that's what we do. We pray for those in authority, that God will move. This is the God that changes the hearts of kings. That's his deal. That's not my issue. I'm told to pray for them, not complain about them. So don't idolise people or things or you know it could be anything from the gym to what is it you need to do every day what do you struggle with it could be tea I know that sounds really simple but what do you need every day what do you start getting cross about if you don't have it's an idol it's something that you worship and God has ways of moving these things it can even be relationships and even if the relationship is the right relationship if they're in the wrong position, if they're an idol in your heart, then it doesn't matter if they're the right relationship because it'll knock the balance. And when we don't have God as our head of everything, when God is not the supreme in our life, it actually restricts his ability to move in our life because it comes into free will. So when we have something else as our source, it creates difficulties. That's when we start trying to fix it ourselves and trying to do things ourselves. And that's, we all know that's when it gets messy. <laughs> so in this day, we must remind ourselves because it's us that changes it. It's not God. God doesn't change his mind and walk off. He doesn't think, well, I'm going to go over here for a while. It's us. It's where we align ourselves with heaven. And when we worship from our depths, when we go to that place where we release the sound of heaven from within us that we were born with, that we're part of, then heaven can come down and we can meet in the middle and we can have that communion together with God that just realigns. It's almost like clicking back into place. And it's so exciting because in a choir, everybody has a sound, but you have different sections so we don't all do the same thing. We don't all worship the same. We don't all speak the same. We don't all sound the same. In fact, in a choir, you have different groups and different sounds that sing different parts. So some sing the chorus, some sing the verses, some sing the bridge. But as long as the conductor's up front, as long as that's God, and we're all singing the same song, then when we come together in harmony, in unity, God commands a blessing because of the sound that's released. We don't need to be like our neighbours. We don't need, we shouldn't even be looking <laughs> to the side what everybody's doing. You know, it's coming in the alignment with what God has. He is the orchestrator. He's the author and finisher of our faith. He is the one that puts it all together. God is not random. He is so ordered. He knows exactly where everything goes. If we look back at our lives and even ask him, show me how that worked. There's so many miracles just dotted throughout our lives of chance meetings, of bumping into people, of seeing things, of hearing things, even our bodies, everything is such a miracle. And he orchestrates these things. So the only time we miss those is when we're out of alignment. So again, when we get on our faces and submit everything in worship to God and remember who he is. That strengthens the connection. It builds relationship with the Father. It allows us to come into line. Remember that actually, without God, we're dust. You know, it's, it's the breath of God in our lungs that keeps us alive, no, no matter anything else. So when we are worshiping and in an alignment and lifting ourselves up to the Father, we bring that heavenly perspective back in. We know his voice more because he speaks to us. It's so important. I can't stress how important it is. 
with prayer and worship coming together to just really strengthen that. And it's about you and God. It's not about anybody else. If God wants somebody in your life, if he wants you to align with somebody, he will tell you and he will make it happen. If it's a battle to make it happen, you need to keep hanging up on the God and just letting him deal with it because it's it's his job to bring these things to pass. We need to be obedient and to pray into them and do what God asks us to do. So in this time, I'm just saying, you know, this is the most special time. We need to push into worship. We need to get our hearts postured correctly. We need to humble ourselves before the Father and come into alignment with what he's doing. Everybody can look good. Everybody can look awesome when it comes to who you're going to align with. But you must only align with the godly alignments that God has because if it's the wrong fit it's the wrong fit it doesn't mean there's a bad one or a good one or they're better or you know they're walking right or they're not that that's all irrelevant God will have a path for you the same as he has a path for me and to walk that we need to know what his instructions are we need to know his voice we need to know his his plans therefore we need to be in relationship with him to hear those and worship's a cracking way to do that because, again, just worshiping the Father, coming in the alignment with Him, it's incredibly powerful. It's just for to understand that the God we serve that is so mighty, that created the heavens and the earth, that we, we worship Him because of Him, but yet it's so beneficial to us that relationship is just strengthened. It's incredible. I really just want to bless you guys. Push through whatever it is, no matter what it is, and don't try and bring your problems into worship. Let me explain that. Don't try and think, well, if I worship, then I'll feel better about this and keep thinking about it. And the only reason you worship is because we worship God for who he is. It's not an asking for help. It's not a, I'll worship for a wee minute. And then I'll ask, it's not the wee bit before somebody talks. Worship is an intimate connection between you and the Father as you sing to him and you worship him and you acknowledge who he is. And it's beneficial to us because it's truth and the truth sets you free. So go into worship, go into this place. And I can talk about it, but unless you, you do it, you'll not understand how freeing it actually is. Get heaven's perspective. Lay it all down. Humble yourselves. It's incredible. It really is that we serve such a God that loves us and sent his son to die for us. There will never be anything that takes the place of the cross there will be nothing no more important than that because it was the sacrifice that allowed us to come boldly to the throne of grace to worship the father as we were always created to do so in this day worship and you know the enemy hates it because worship is warfare because it's saying that's irrelevant what you're doing to the enemy and it's saying God is God and that's it. And it annoys the life clean out of him because we cannot change who God is. Nobody can change who God is. Nobody can diminish his power. Nobody can drain his love. Nobody can do these things. God is God. He is sovereign. He is almighty. He's El Shaddai, Elohim. And we serve him and he loves us. That in itself is a miracle to be told over and over again. And when we get that understanding, when we get that perspective, worship is such a beautiful thing. It's such a beautiful, beautiful thing. And it doesn't matter if you sing or warble or croak. Your sound is the one that God gave you. And it's your sound for a reason. So release it onto the Father. Release it around your home. Release your sound in worship as God aligns you with your destiny and brings you into a place where you can actually see and hear him clearer than anywhere else. It's incredible. Bless you guys. Thank you for keeping in touch and we hope to see you soon. Bless you.